In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on, on earth, earth peace to people, people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that, unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Wisdom is radiant and unfading, and she is easily discerned by those who love her and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her. One who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty, for she will be found sitting at the gate. To fix one's thought on her is perfect understanding, and one who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care because she goes about seeking those worthy of her and she graciously appears to them in their paths and meets them in every thought. The word of the Lord. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord, my God. O God, you are my God, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord, my God. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord. I think of you on my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Keep awake and be ready. You do not know when the Son of Man is coming. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke this parable to the disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And when they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. On Tuesday, I recorded the sixth episode of the Corpus Christi Show on YouTube with Father Abbot John Berganza, who's the abbot of Westminster Abbey in Mission, and that's where I went to seminary. And I was so encouraged by a message that he gave to us at the end of the interview when I asked him what is his message for us during these times of COVID that I wanted to share just one of the insights with you today. So we know after the coronavirus struck in March, our whole world was turned upside down. And Father Abbott said that we all became very conscious of the invisible presence of a virus in our lives. We all became very conscious of the invisible presence of a virus in our lives. We act like it's present almost everywhere we go and in many people that we meet, and that it could come at any moment in our own lives. And so after about six months or so of this new way of thinking, living with COVID has become normal for us. Now, Father Abbott said, as Christians, we're supposed to believe that the only reason God would allow something bad to happen in our lives, like COVID, is because somehow he can bring a greater good out of it. 
Father Abbott said that one of the greater goods that could be coming out of this time of COVID is to teach us a lesson. And the lesson's this. We're going to learn what it's like to live in the presence of something or someone that we cannot see. He said that the lesson is we're learning what it's like to live in the presence of something or someone that we cannot see. See, Fa Father Abbott shared that when Christ rose from the dead, our whole world was also turned upside down. And as we heard in today's second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, which is the earliest Christian text we have, written after Christ rose from the dead, so it gives a great idea of what life was like after Christ rose from the dead, the early Christians became very conscious of the presence of Jesus in their lives. They actually lived as if Jesus was in like every person they met, everywhere they went. And as we heard in today's second reading, that Jesus was going to come again at any moment in their lives. And so after years of this new way of thinking, living with Christ became normal for these early Christians. Maybe you can start to see the parallels between the early Christians and how they lived in the presence of Jesus. That became normal for them. They were constantly awaiting the second coming. And how today, living with COVID has become normal for us as we constantly await COVID in our lives, the second wave, or whatever you might call it. And so as I talked with Father Abbott about this parallel between today and COVID and the early Christians in Christ, there's a message that was really encouraging because we've, we've convinced ourselves that we know what it's like to live in the presence of something we cannot see, this virus that's in our lives. And if we realize that, we can prove to ourselves that we can also live in the presence of someone that we cannot see, which is Jesus. Now, you might object and say, okay, well, we can't see COVID, but we can sure see its effects. Just read the news. But the early Christians could probably say the same thing. Although we can't see Jesus, we can sure see its effects. Read the good news. Look at how our lives have been transformed by Jesus. Read the Acts of the Apostles. You see these apostles whose lives were totally transformed by the presence of Jesus. And there's something so encouraging in that message for us today. The whole idea that I'd like to communicate, we call it in Catholic spirituality, the practice of the presence of God. This idea, as St. Paul recommends to the Thessalonians that you'll hear next week, this idea of praying always, praying at all times, the practice of the presence of God. I remember in my own life, as I was reflecting upon when I've become aware of Jesus' presence in my life, the first time I can recall after my conversion was about nine years ago, and it was in November, I remember. It might have been these same readings. And I was at my home parish, St. Joseph the Worker. I remember so clearly the priest in his homily saying, Jesus is with us at all times. And he said, your life is a test. And at the end of your life, you're either going to pass or fail this test. And I just remember that homily so well. And I came home, and my parents were preparing for lunch. And I went to my room, and I was all alone by myself or at least I thought, and I suddenly felt this strong temptation to fall into sin, to go on the internet and do stuff that I knew I shouldn't be doing. And in that moment of temptation, I recalled the priest's homily, Jesus is with us at all times, and I simply, like, I called upon Jesus' name in that moment, just, Jesus, help me. And for the first time in my life, I felt his presence. It was like I was actually not alone. Jesus was actually with me. And it was, I felt so inspired and encouraged in that moment that I felt completely set free from that temptation. 
And that was just one experience that I had of what it's like to actually live in the presence of Jesus. Because we hear it all the time, like, oh, Jesus is with us. But we need to allow his presence to really change our lives. And it can be transformative for us as it was for me in that moment. Now, when I think about this, this one experience, what's encouraging for me is if, if we can do it once, we're proving to ourselves that we can do it again. It's like when I'm playing a video game, if, if I beat a level once, I know the next time I face that level, I can beat it easily the second time. So when we prove to ourselves we can do something once, we know we can repeat it again and again and again. And it's so simple. We've got to make it simple. It's just calling upon Jesus' name and inviting him into whatever you're doing. And it's literally like anything that you're doing. I was thinking up examples and how I've tried it over this week. It could be for you something as simple as you're leaving here at Mass and you're walking or driving home. You could just ask, Jesus, do you want to come with me? And then maybe he'll visualize himself walking with you and you could start up a conversation with him. Or you're just at lunch. Jesus, do you want to eat with me? Or you hear news about COVID when you're watching TV. Jesus, do you want to watch with me? And then actually talk to him about what's going on in your life. It's so inspiring because when we have these experiences, especially of COVID, it draws us into the sense of isolation, that we're all alone. But Jesus' presence, he's always with us. When we call upon his name, we're becoming aware that he's with us. And that's what he wants. He wants us to become aware of his presence at all times. One parishioner actually told me this week that he set an alarm in his phone uh, so that every hour at least he can remind himself that Jesus is with him. It's amazing. You know, just every hour he sees on his, on his uh, iWatch, just like, Jesus is with me. And he just reminds himself at least once an hour that Jesus is with him. And it might be challenging at first, because this is a new habit to do, but it is so worth it. Because every single time we have these experiences of Jesus actually being with us, we practice the presence of God, every single time we do it, we'll start to experience the effects of Jesus' presence. He'll replace these feelings of isolation, anxiety, depression with his presence, which always comes with peace, joy, or just a sense that he's with us. And sometimes that's just all you need to know that you are not alone. Any time of the day, wherever you may be, in whatever you're going through, Jesus is with you. Just one final thought on today's second reading. So St. Paul, in his letter to the Thessalonians, which I, I highly encourage everyone just to read. It takes maybe 10 minutes to read. And it gives this, as I shared, this great visual of what, it's li- what it was like for the early Christians after the time of Christ's resurrection. St. Paul presented to this community that life on earth is simply a rehearsal for the main event of being with Jesus forever in heaven. He presented life on earth as a rehearsal for the main event of being with Jesus forever in heaven. And we all know that the best way to prepare for a main event is by rehearsing well. Just as, say, the best way to prepare for a piano recital would be to visualize yourself in front of the audience and then to perform whatever piece you're going to do, the same idea applies to heaven. So I'll ask you a question. Okay, so since the main event in heaven, what actually is going to happen in heaven is that we'll be with Jesus 24-7. We'll live in the presence of Jesus at all times. What would be the best way to rehearse for that main event? 
How could we rehearse well? If heaven's living in the presence of Jesus 24-7, then what would be the best way to rehearse for that main event? It's by practicing the presence of Jesus as much as we can here on earth. It's by trying to live in his presence as much as we can. It starts with just the daily things that we're doing, because that's what life will be like forever in heaven, actually being with Jesus, something that I deeply desire. I long to see Jesus face to face and to live in his presence. And the more times I invite him just into the little things, the meals, watching TV, going for walks, you start to experience these foretastes of what it'll be like forever in heaven, the joy of being with Jesus. And so we can practice this in just the little things, to call upon his name, invite him into the daily things that we're doing, and begin to experience how every single time we do so, he replaces the isolation, anxiety, and fear with his presence, which always comes with what we truly need in that moment. So let us pray. Jesus, help us to live in your presence. We invite you into all that we do today and in all the days of our lives going forward. Come with us and be with us. Replace all of our anxieties and fears that COVID is causing with a sense of your peace and joy. Let us stand and make our profession of faith by praying the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God the Father wants all mankind to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. And now we place some of our prayers and petitions before him. For the church, that having taken the word of God to heart, we may have a spirit of readiness so that we can respond to God's presence and invitations at any moment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Father, our bishop, and our priests, may they constantly inspire us with their wisdom and readiness to welcome the Lord at any time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of wisdom, that God will give us insight and understanding through our daily experiences, so that we may value and nurture those things that will sustain us into eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us and the other members of our parish community, may we show support for one another as we do our best to live in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For all who have died, particularly those who have served our nation or our faith communities, that God will welcome them to the eternal banquet to live in God's presence forever, especially Antonio Celio and the Rusiti family, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join us in saying the prayer for reverence for life. Almighty God, giver of all that is good, we thank you for the precious gift of human life, for life in the womb coming from your creative power, for the life of children making us glad with their freshness and promise, for the life of young people hoping for a better world, for the life of people who are disabled, teaching us that every life has value. For the life of the elderly, witnessing to the ageless values of patience and wisdom. Like Blessed Mary, may we always say yes to your gift. May we defend it and promote it from conception to its natural end. And bring us at last, O Father, to the fullness of eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the law of his holy truth. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that, celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of, eternal, of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat>
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. <coughs> and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise or the offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings <clears throat> with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. 
In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of your Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my life, but only say the word, and my soul shall be found.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those, in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements. Uh, number one, a uh, reminder that the walkathon is actually this coming Saturday. So this is the last Sunday uh, whereby people can pledge if they so wish. Uh, I'm not sure if somebody will be uh, in the welcoming booth taking pledges. Oh, yes, great. Um, so there will be pledges taken uh, at the welcoming booth, but there's also the opportunity to pledge online. If you go to the electronic bulletin, it's at the very last page of the electronic bulletin. And as uh, I've said before, all funds raised uh, for, from the walkathon will be going to the parish school and parish center. So uh, if you're unable to uh, pledge, it's, uh, you have to keep it in your prayers. You have no choice there. You do have the option of pledging or not, but you have to keep this in your prayers because the walkathon, but the whole school and parish center as a whole, uh, because it's, it's really coming along well. Uh, but everybody knows, as I've said, you know, a $24.5 million price tag. You know, obviously, we have a lot of it raised now, but we still have projected to raise $7 million. The more we raise before we uh, bite into our loan, which is probably next August, uh, the less money we have to borrow, you all know what that's about. So that's why the fundraising is really going to be sort of ramped up in this next year. It will help all of us. Uh, and the sooner we pay the school off, the sooner we can begin to uh, uh, seismically upgrade our church. So please consider at the booth or online. Keep it in your prayers. Our next young adult event is this coming Friday. It'll be from 7 to 9 here in the church. I got permission from Archbishop Miller's staff to still host the event. And it'll be a time of adoration, confession. Uh, Deacon Raphael, who is just ordained, will be coming to share his testimony and leading us in time of adoration. So it's from 7 to 9 p.m. this Friday. Uh, there's about 10 spots left online. You can talk to me after Mass or send, uh, send me a message for those online if you want to join in. And please, everyone, pray for the young adults uh, as we prepare for the event on Friday. It'll be live streamed as well. So if you're not a young adult, but you feel young at heart, you're welcome to, to watch. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Saint, Saint Michael, Michael the Archangel, defend, defend us in battle. Be our, our defense, defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God Amen. rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.